Hello there, and welcome to Odessa First Assembly's weekly podcast, where we bring you the heart of our Sunday message. I'm Tony, your host and the face behind our digital ministry. We're excited to dive into today's sermon, exploring the Word of God together. So grab your coffee, find a comfy spot, and let's embark on this journey of faith. Without further ado, here's this week's sermon. So really an easy way to do that. If you have your Bibles, 1 Samuel chapter 3, um, I really didn't have a, I normally always, always go by doing a series. I really didn't have um, anything planned uh, for the next few weeks, neither, and uh, for uh, December either. And so we're just going to see what the Lord does. Um, in, the, in the coming weeks, we're also going to be talking more about our 21 days of prayer and fasting. We always take 21 days during January for a time of prayer and fasting. Um, and I think more and more have just been involved with that every year. And it's just been, uh, it, it just, uh, it's exciting. It's exciting to hear from the Lord and to seek the Lord and um, kind of push aside our agenda just for a few days and allow the Lord to speak to us and minister to us and give us direction. And so I'm, you're going to he- be hearing more about that. So First Samuel chapter 3. Uh, let's pray before we get started. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for your presence. We thank you um, for your safety this week. And just ask you this morning that you just minister through your word, that you'd minister through your spirit to us, that our hearts would be good soil, just ready to receive your word. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 3, but I, I do have to say one thing really quick. We had this conversation, me and Shaylee and Kaylee and Angel were out eating, and Kaylee asked me who the number one team in the NFL was. This is important stuff, y'all. And I said, well, the Dallas Cowboys are, babe. I said, that it's the, and so she decides to Google, and for some reason, Google said the Eagles, and I, I said, Google is wrong. She said, well, it says the 49ers are second. I said, well, the Eagles are 32nd and the 49ers are 31st. And so, uh, but however, if you're a football fan, it was neat to see Bland, his fifth interception pick six. And uh, so anyway, it, it's, uh, we are a football family and we all like different teams in our family and the living room um, Saturday, Angel's rooting for Tech, Chase is rooting for Texas. I don't know where either one of them get that, but anyway, pray for him. And so, uh, but for it, let's get to business. First Samuel chapter 3, let's read it together. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At the time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called to Samuel and said to him, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call Go lie down again. So he went to lie down. And the Lord called again Samuel. And Samuel rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, or the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called to Samuel again a third time. And he rose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for, the, for you called me. Then Eli perceived the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went to lie down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling at, as other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Such a wonderful story account we see about young Samuel, the prophet Samuel, in Scripture. I have decided after this week, 
I have decided that there is probably going to be a time in my life that uh, I'm going to have to possibly have hearing aids. I've been in several homes and the TV's really loud and a lot of huzz and what's and, um, well, from my dad and my father-in-law. And uh, I thought, you know what, when I, when I, when I get to the age, I, I, I'm just going to, I know they cost a lot of money, but uh, I'm, I'm going to get hearing aids. And, uh, but, you know, and I know that now maybe some of us, it's, it's just not me. I know that the, the run, you know, kind of the joke is, is that, you know, the husband, uh, me in the recliner watching football may have selective hearing. But what I have found, that's just not a male issue. I have found that wives <clears throat> say a lot of huh too. Matter of fact, I don't know if you know this, but the most common four-letter word with married couples is what? There was these three friends, they were all wearing hearing aids, and they were walking down the street, and one of them said to the other, oh, it's windy today, isn't it? The other one said, no, it's Thursday. The third one said, yes, I'm hungry, let's go get something to eat. But I'll... There is something I have discovered is that there is no better hearing aid in life than that of the Holy Spirit. Part of his mission and job is to help us hear of what the Lord is saying. Matter of fact, when you go through scripture, you see John chapter 16 that he takes from this con the conversation that's happening between the Father and Jesus and the scripture says he makes it known to us. He speaks to us. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 that it's the Holy Spirit that searches the depths of God, but the things that God has prepared for those who love him, it's the Holy Spirit that reveals it to them, to us. And we see it all through scripture. And so I do, I want to talk for a few moments about hearing God. How does God speak to us? Hearing God's voice. But to, to really lay the groundwork, the obvious thing is, is that God speaks to us through his word, through his written word. We have this precious book, collection of books called the Bible. And it's 66 books written over 1,500 years, 40 different authors, three different languages, different continents, and yet we have this book that has been inspired by the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you, if you want to hear the Lord speak to you, he's going to speak to you through his word. I mean, the Bible tells us 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, correction, training in righteousness, that the man of God, that every person may be made complete. You are made complete through what God has written to us in his word. I mean, I, I, we cannot stress that enough. Isaiah 55 tells us that his word that is sent out, that comes out of his mouth, it's going to accomplish what it's sent out to do, and it is not going to return void. God's word contains everything that we need to know, that we should know, that we have to know. It expresses us to, to, to us who God is. It, it expresses to us our mission and purpose in life. I mean, God, there is nothing more important than God's word. But there's a second thing that God does, and he speaks to our spirits. Now, to be redundant on purpose is that God is never going to speak something to your heart that's not written in his word. Everything that God speaks to you into your spirit, whatever impression he gives you, God's word is going to line up with that. I mean, there's, there's a lot of us in life, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they really make excuses for bad choices and blame God. And it's like, I know that God never told you that, but that's opposite of what God's word says. We need to know that God does speak to us. He does impress upon us. I think a beautiful promise. It's, and even looking at it, it's in, it's in context, but this is a, this is a special promise. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21. And your ears 
shall hear a word behind you. I love how Isaiah writes this. Your ears shall hear a word behind you. Meaning what? That God puts these impressions in our heart, into our spirit, guiding us and leading us. And he says, this is the way to walk in. And when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, but it's, it's the voice of the Lord giving us this direction, these impressions in life. And yes, God uses people. God uses impressions. God uses that still small voice. God will use joy and peace or um, having an unsettledness in our spirit. Listen, if you're praying about something and you feel uneasy about something, the Lord is probably giving you an impression on the answer. If you're trying to make a decision and you feel complete joy and peace and, and there's no burden or weight involved with it, then the Lord is giving you an impression by the Holy Spirit. But the God will always, what he speaks to us, he will line up with his word. And here we have Samuel, who's just a boy. He's living, you know, he was dedicated to the Lord by Hannah and, and brought to the temple. And we read in 1 Samuel th- verses 1 and 2, and I, I wanna, really want to point these things out. It says, now the boy, Samuel, what was he doing? He was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And it also tells us the word of the Lord was rare. That wasn't anybody's fault except for Eli. Eli was the high priest. It was, it was, and we don't have time to go into all of that, but in those days, there was no frequent vision. So Samuel's a young boy in a time where the word of the Lord is rare. There's not frequent vision. But I think that uh, verse 2 kind of illustrates why that was. Why was the word of the Lord rare? Why was, there wasn't these, God given these impressions or speaking or or given the fresh revelation or vision. We see in verse 2 that at the time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim, I don't think that was just a physical affliction. I think it very well was a a spiritual affliction as well. So that he could not see. And look what it says. He was lying down in his own place. And we see a difference between Samuel and Eli. That Eli was laying down in his own place. But where was Samuel? Samuel was with the presence of the Lord. Near the ark of the Lord. And he was ministering to the Lord. Do you you see the difference? And so I'm going to tell you. To hear God speaks to you. Something we need to realize is that position limits distraction. Or, I mean, we could say it more kind of in, in a negative connotation and say that uh, 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 position increases distraction. And we've got to really make the choice of where we're going to live. If you want to hear God, I'm going to tell you something. Then you need to get close to God. First Samuel 3, 3, look at what it says. The lamp of God had not gone out, and so hope has not gone yet. Samuel was lying down in the temple where the ark of God was. What was the ark of God? The ark of God was the representation of God's presence. And that's exactly where Samuel was. And Samuel was in that place, and the Lord was speaking to Samuel. I'm going to tell you, it is a big deal where you are in your relationship with God. And I'm going to give you a, a word, and a very important word. It's not in your notes, but you need to remember this. The, the, it's, just, it's an extremely important word. And what that word is, reconciliation. You see, there is a chasm because of the sinfulness of man that separates us from God. The Bible says that all fall short of the glory of God. That's not the gospel according to Pastor Todd. That's found in Romans. 
And what we see is, is that because that Adam and Eve, they fell in the garden, it brought sin into the world and has separated man from God in relationship. But God and his infinite wisdom and his infinite plan and his infinite power provided his one and only son to become a sacrifice to shed his blood that we could be completely reconciled with the father. And so it changes our position. Come on, somebody. It changes our position from separated from God to reconciled with God. So we see that what Samuel was ministering to the Lord, it wasn't based on circumstance. I mean, the Lord, uh, the word of the Lord was rare. There was no frequent vision being given, but yet Samuel still was ministering to the Lord. I want you to think about that for a second. Eli was his own place, but Samuel where, was where God's presence was represented. And so proximity to God will limit distractions when the closer you get, and now listen to me, I know and I realize that like if we were to get like literal, you know, theology, listen, God fills every one of us with his presence. And that, that, that presence is called the Holy Spirit. When we get saved, the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes in and makes us a new creation. I, I understand that. I, I, I know the Bible says, John 7, 37, 38, that out of our inmost being will flow rivers of living water. How does that happen? Because of God's work inside of us. I know the Bible says, do you not know that you are temples of the Holy Spirit? But I'm going to tell you, in, in, our, in my human mind, I'll say it this way, in my human mind, I understand that the way I live out life many times dictates of how I experience God's presence in my life. Distractions will limit what we hear from the Lord. We can, you can work too much. You can allow life situations deafen your spirit, your voice, your ears to the word of the Lord. Circumstances. I, this one, I'm, you know, I'm going to turn around. I'm going to cover my eyes. Devices. Phones and iPads and computers and TVs. Amen. Hobbies. I mean, the list can go on and on and on. Whatever keeps us from devotion time from the Lord. And I know sometimes it's difficult, but we have to make that choice. And I, listen, I know we've got to guard ourselves against like a, a religious nature, you know, kind of that Pharisaical, you know, uh, you know maybe that's a word I just made up, but a Pharisee type style um, view of things. I mean, sometimes it is hard, but I also tell you that the root word of disciple comes from discipline. Listen, every time I pray and read my Bible, I mean, I don't have goosebumps and snot bubbles every single time that I pray. But I know out of relationship with him, I've got to have those, I've got to have that moment. Every time I read God's word, I don't get these epiphanies and like these, you know, drastic revelations. But I know that it's through his word how he speaks to him. And as I take in his word, his word will not return void. I mean, we have a lot of static to contend with. But the Bible says, John 14, 17, even the spirit of truth, talking about the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive, right? Because you've got to get saved to receive the Holy Spirit. Neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be where? In you. In you. And the Lord places his spirit inside of us because he wants us in proximity to him. I, I feel like I'm teaching and preaching a little better than what I'm getting responded. 
Thank you. Here's another aspect of hearing God's voice. What was Samuel doing? Samuel was ministering to the Lord. I'm going to give you a very probably um, in, in our culture today an unpopular statement. But I'm going to tell you, if you want to hear God's voice, God honors serving. God honors serving. Verse 1, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. Where was he serving? He was serving in the presence of the Lord. If you want to hear God's voice, then step out and do something for God. I mean, it's hard to go anywhere in a parked car. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean... Where are you going to go? I mean, you're in the car. It's in park. Where are you going to go? You're not going to go anywhere. You've got to start the car. You've got to put it in drive. And you've got to press that. And, and I, it seems like, I, it, well, anyway, I'm not going to get in a soapbox about Odessa driving. But we have this pedal to the right, this long pedal that we press and we go, we move. Get up and do something from the Lord if you feel like the heavens are brass. If you feel like your prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling, then come out of that cave and do something for the Lord. I will just about guarantee you that God will speak to you. Number two is this. This is a big one. Put God's agenda over yours. Put God's agenda over yours. Eli was where? Eli was in his own place. He was about his own agenda, doing his own thing. And it seems to me that's maybe one of the reasons why the word of the Lord was rare, that God wasn't speaking to Eli or to a lot of people, that there wasn't fresh vision happening. So to hear from the Lord, it starts by having a neutral heart. Here is something I've discovered. If I want something bad enough, and so I go to the Lord in prayer, and I'll say, God, I want this to happen. I want this. And sometimes one or two things happens. One is I hear nothing in return. Or two, I hear no. But I'll ask again. And I'll keep asking. And I'll keep asking. And I'll keep asking. And I'll keep asking. And I, I, there's, a, there's something that uh, I, I tell a lot of leaders around me and that we raise up is, is, is simply this. Don't know, don't go. And too many people go when God's not speaking anything. I'm giving you some nuggets this morning. Are, are y'all, are, are you still liking turkey comatose? Are you okay? <laughs> don't know, don't go. If God is not saying anything on the matter, then don't force the matter. But don't know, but here's what I have found that sometimes, I mean, it's almost like God says, I've told you no, I haven't answered you for a reason, but if you really want it, fine. And then... The next prayer is, God, why'd you do this to me? And it's more of, why didn't you listen to me? We have to have a neutral heart. Whenever you're praying for direction or praying about something, and yes, the scripture tells us, yes, that God gives us the desires of our heart. But let me just give you a little, like a little newsflash. That doesn't mean everything your heart desires, Where God gives us the desires of our heart is because we have been in proximity with him. We've been in communion with the Holy Spirit. He's been showing us things out of his word. He's been putting impressions upon our heart. And we get in line with what God wants. When God gives us the desires of our heart, listen to me. It's not about God getting on our page to give us whatever we want. But it's about us being on his page. But listen to me. God, if you want God to speak to you, you've got to have a neutral heart. 
if, if you want God's answer to be yes, bad enough, I'm going to tell you his answer will be yes. And usually what happens is we reap the whirlwind, right? Has anybody ever been there and experienced that? Eli was, or Samuel was serving before the Lord with no agenda, no agenda. And you know, and the reality is there are plenty of competing voices, but Samuel was serving the Lord. He was in proximity to the Lord. Eli was his own place. I want you to see first Samuel chapter three and verse nine. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down. If he calls you, you shall say, speak Lord for your servants ears hears speak lord for your servant hears speak lord for i want to hear what you have to say on the matter speak lord i want to hear what you have to say you know it's been great to have i I mean our family is so precious to us and having all five of us together um it's just been i love it i love it i love it we're, we actually, we're not going to have a whole lot of time after service. Now, if the Lord moves and does something special, Chase will just have to probably get an Uber. But uh, we have to cut out pretty quick to get him to the airport, to back to his snow-covered Minneapolis. And so you can have all that you want. And we'll just have our 60-degree December. Um, but, you know, there's something, a trait about Chase, is that uh, Chase is... All in wherever he is. We've always said about this, Chase, about this, about Chase. And so here's kind of a conversation sometimes of what happens at home. I don't get to use him for illustrations much anymore. And so he's here today. And don't worry, Shaylee, next time will be your turn. And so you're trying to have a conversation with Chase. And it's like, you know, so me saying, Chase, what do you want to watch? Chase, what do you want to watch? No answer. Chase, what do you want to watch? No answer. Me with increasing volume. Chase, what do you want to watch? No answer. Me with even more increasing volume. Has anybody ever ever gone through this cycle? Me with a little more increasing volume. Chase, what do you want to watch? Then me with an extremely multiplied increasing volume. Chase, what do you want to watch? Dad, quit yelling. (laughs) We, our ears, our spiritual ears, really need to be open to the Lord's agenda. Sometimes that agenda, man, will be right in line with what you're praying, what you're wanting, where you're headed. Sometimes that alignment will be, he'll speak to you a no, maybe wait, maybe later. But the way you hear that still small voice is being in his proximity. We must have a neutral heart. We must be in pursuit of the father, not in pursuit of what he can do. Our God can do anything. Matter of fact, the psalmist wrote that our God does whatever he pleases. He is all, he's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's ever present. But listen to me. Our pursuit must be of him, not just what's in his hands. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse six, and without faith, it's impossible to please him for whatever you draw, whenever you draw near to God, whenever you draw, whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and he rewards those that who? That seek him. Not for what he does, not for what he can do for us, not for what we can gain, not for just for him to bless us, but it really needs to be about him. Second, uh, First Chronicles sixteen eleven. Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continually. Number three is this: We must be ready to walk in obedience. I have said this so many times over the last decade, and I'm going to say it again: that God will not speak to us beyond our last disobedience. 
If you want to hear the Lord's voice, then we must walk in obedience. A prepared heart will be ready to obey. Whenever our hearts have been softened through the word of the Lord and through his presence in our life, I'm going to tell you that every single week, what do we pray? We pray, we pray according to the parable of the sower that his word would find good soil and that which is planted in that good soil will yield the harvest 30, 60, 100 times which was sown. How does that happen? That happens through a heart that is ready to walk in obedience. And every single time, whether it's from me up here on this platform or a podcast or TV or whatever it is, whenever you hear God's word being cast out, being sown, Listen, the parable of the sower is just not something that happens just once. Any time that God's word is sown, we have a choice of what kind of heart we're going to be. Are you following me? In that moment, whenever we're reading God's word and we make a choice, eh, or yes, Lord, or maybe something's being preached. And I grant, I know we've got to, we've got to have our antennas open to what's biblical, what's not biblical. There's a lot of stuff, you know, being thrown out there these days. But when God's word, see, and what's, what's Isaiah 55? When his word goes out, what happens? It accomplishes what it's sent out to do. And it does not return void. And there's a lot of us that have experienced just the opposite. That maybe we think, but God's word has returned void. It hasn't accomplished what it sent out to do. Then I would be so bold to suggest what we latched onto was not God's word. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Our hearts have to be ready to receive. Whenever, Whenever the word is broadcasted, we can allow the enemy to steal it. Whenever the word is broadcasted, we can allow our hearts to grow hard. Whenever the word is broadcasted, we can make the choice. And for a moment, we may receive it with joy. Then because of persecution and the cares of the world, it chokes out that word. Or we can be that good soil and receive it. The heart that is ready to obey, I'm going to tell you that God will speak to you. The reality is this, is that, and I, I, listen to the way that I word this, willful sin hardens us. You see, none of us are perfect, right? I mean, actually, I, I kind of get tired of that saying. I mean, it, you know, I mean, none of us are. We're, we're, we're all human, we all fall short, we all make mistakes. And you know, there are times in life where you maybe succumb to a sin, you know, for, for whatever reason, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's like you are making a choice that you are going to rebel against what God has for you. There is a difference between when I just fall short and I mess up sometimes, whether by deed or attitude. Versus, I am choosing to walk in disobedience to the Lord. The longer we walk in disobedience to the Lord, the harder our heart becomes. Hebrews chapter 3 verse 12. Take care, brothers, lest there be in in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart leading you to fall away from the living God. I mean, boy, boy, the writer of Hebrews was giving a straight, wasn't he? Verse 13, but exhort one another every day, as long as it's called today, listen, that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. What does willful sin do in your life? It hardens you. And that's why people get confused and and, and misunderstand and, and misinterpret God's word and what he's impressing upon our hearts. I mean, when you look at 1 Samuel, chapter 3 in Samuel, something happened in this moment. 
And through the rest of Samuel's life, no matter what God told him to say, he said. I mean, he became one of the most well-known prophets of God. Because he learned something when he was very young in the presence of God by the ark, ministering to the Lord, and simply with Eli's instruction saying, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That's a heart ready to receive from the Lord. And in verse 19, we see that Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall on The ground. Think about that for a moment. It's just further down from our text, verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. Why? Because Samuel was ministering in the presence of the Lord. Samuel had a neutral heart that was ready to receive them from the Lord. No matter I mean, think of you remember it was Samuel, right? It was Samuel, you know, Israel was, cr- was crying out for a king, and the Lord was trying to tell him, listen, listen, if you really want a king, that's one of those situations where the Lord is trying to speak to him and say, if you really want a king, I'm going to give you a king. That's not what's best for you. That's not what I want for you. But if you want a king, I hear you. And I'm going to let you have your way. Why? Because Israel's heart was not neutral. It wanted for itself what all the nations around it had. But God had chosen Israel to be a different kind of nation. Are you following me? And so the nation's crying out. We want a king. And God's like, listen, if you get a king, he's going to take your money. He's going to take your land. And he's going to take your sons and go to war. God, we want a king. And so they found Saul and they appointed Saul. And Saul became a king. And then eventually Saul messed up and he did everything the Lord told him what they're going to do. And eventually Saul messed up and God said, okay, your, your lineage ends with you in rule. There is, you know, none of your offspring are going to be kings. I'm going to look for another. And so God used Samuel. And what did Samuel do? Samuel went to a man's house and he said, hey, bring me your sons. And so there are all these, you know, big strapping guys, you know, these sons and, and, and Jesse brings them in and he's like, nope, not him. Nope, not him. And he went through all of his sons. And after they all passed by, he was like, is there not one more? And he's like, yeah, there's a, I got a kid on the back 40, but Surely not him. He's like, nope, that's who the Lord wants. I mean, think about it. How, how was he so in tune with the Lord wanted? Because he had that neutral heart. He was in proximity with the Lord. He had grown up in this, this stance of saying, speak, Lord, to me, regardless if I agree with it, regardless if I think whatever I think, I'm going to go with what you say, God. Amen. The fourth thing is this. Don't let any voice compete with God's voice. Don't let any voice compete with God's voice. John chapter 10 and verse 27. John chapter 10 is is really just has so many rich things in it. I mean, but in verse 27, it says something very simple. My sheep hear my voice. And that's the question I think a lot of us come down to. How do we know it's the Lord speaking to us? My sheep hear my voice. I know them. And here's part of the key. They follow me. If you want to know if somebody is hearing from the Lord, they're going to be following the Lord. Through my lifetime, through my some 30 years of serving the Lord, I'm going to tell you, in in my lifetime, I've had quite a few people that have a word for me. Anybody anybody listening? They had a word for me. And I've had to think to myself, their life does not line up with the principles of Scripture. Scripture. And so usually when they give me that word, I have this place I put it. It's called file number seven. 
Now, can God use anybody? He absolutely can use. I mean, he used a donkey and he uses me sometimes. So I know that God can use anybody. I can be pretty stubborn, but listen to me. We allow so much clutter to compete with what scripture simply says to us how to live life. We let a lot of, a lot of stuff being, you know, I mean, I, I love redeeming and using social media for the kingdom. I do. I mean, our church, I don't personally, but our church, you know, we, we post segments on TikTok and, and reels and all that kind of stuff. But listen, I'm going to tell you, you should not be getting your doctrine and theology from social media. You need to get it from his word. Get it from his word. My sheep know my voice. Listen, those that know Jesus, those that know Jesus know his voice. Those that know Jesus know his voice. But where we go into battle and struggle is this, right? We may sense something or feel something or, or, or feel like the Lord is impressing upon us and we go through this battle. Now let me know if you have this battle because I have this battle. I mean, usually what happens when I feel the Lord has spoken to me about something, I was like, ah, you know, I think that's just me. Has anybody ever said that? I mean, sometimes I think to myself, ah, man, I, you know, I did have Bubba's 33 pizza yesterday, which was so good. It was so good. I hadn't had pizza in a long time. It was so good. But pizza does not like me. I like, I love pizza. But pizza hates my guts, literally. And I pay for it every single time. And maybe I feel like the Lord speak to me, and I'm like, ah, that's probably just Bubba's. That's that's probably what that is. Listen, you're going to know the Lord is speaking to you because one, what? What is it going to do? It's going to line up with his word. It's going to build his kingdom. It's going to bring the gospel. It's going to spread the God. It's going to do good things. Life is going to come out of you. But the reason why so many times I think we, we get in this place where we don't know if it's the Lord or us, I'm going to give you the test one way. I don't have the scripture for you. I don't have it up there. But if you read Galatians chapter four, you read a very important passage. You read about a passage. This will also tell you that if you're walking by the spirit or not walking by the spirit. But the Bible says in Galatians chapter four, there was a son born according to the promise and there was a son born according to the flesh. You want to take a guess who those two sons I'm talking about? One was Isaac and one was Ishmael. And remember, there was a promise given to Abraham. And what was that promise? That his offspring, they would outnumber, you know, in the stars of the sky and the sand on the shore. And Sarah and Abraham got ahead of God. And guess what? God let them do it. Right? And they had, I, they had Ishmael. And we still see conflict today because of that. And in Galatians 4, we see, but finally, that God honored his promise, and Abraham and Sarah had Isaac. And so, what happened? There's, the, it created a, a battle that, of, between flesh and spirit. And you read in Galatians 4, that the one born in the flesh will always, always, the word scripture uses, always will pers- persecute the one born according to the spirit. Are you you with me so far? See, the way we are born in the spirit is how we become born again. And when we become born again through the blood of Jesus and receiving his sacrifice, he becomes the Lord of our life. And we are what? We are then born of the spirit. And so when you're going through life, I'm going to tell you how you know when someone's walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit is the one born in the flesh will always persecute the one born in the spirit. Always. And the scripture even says this, Galatians 4, and it is so even now. When Paul was writing the Galatians, which means what? It's still true for us today. But here, so listen to me. It, it, here's another important part of that. How do we know the Lord's speaking to us? I believe it's a beautiful thing that we miss so many times, but it's found in Romans chapter 9. 
Romans chapter 9, we read a verse, a sentence that is so critical in knowing when God is speaking to us. And it says this, Paul is writing, you know, this letter and he says, I'm speaking the truth in Christ. You ever met somebody that said, you know, they, they start off a statement, a story. I'm not lying. I'm speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit. And he goes on to say something very powerful. He goes on to say this. I am willing to go to hell for my brethren to know Jesus. That's what he says in verse 2. My vernacular is what he says. So that, Paul was setting that statement up. He says, listen, I know what I'm about, about to say is going to shock you. That I would be willing to be cursed for my brethren, for my, for my, for my Jewish family to know Jesus. But how does he express that? He says, I'm not lying. My conscience bears witness and the Holy Spirit. When you read in the book of Romans, you read about that it is out of our spirit that cries out, Abba, Father. Right? Does anybody remember that verse? I mean, there's a whole segment in there about what it is to follow after the flesh and what it is to follow after the spirit. But here's what I'm going to tell you. Is that the reason why we miss some things that God is speaking to us, because it's our conscience that bears witness in the Holy Spirit. And I don't know about you, but there's, there's when, when I talk to myself, don't not, some of you do too, don't look at me weird. But when, when I talk to myself, you know who it sounds like? It sounds like me. Now, there are some times I talk to myself and it sounds like my mom. But most of the time it sounds like me. And so we get these impressions into our spirit about, do, about praying for somebody. Hey, maybe you should call them and check up on them. Hey, maybe you should go by and see them. And we get these impressions that are good things, and then we go in this battle, but it sounds like me. Of course it sounds like you, because the Holy Spirit is bearing witness to your conscience, and that's why it's called the still small voice. Come on, I just gave you a really good truth right there, church. The Holy Spirit bears witness in us, and he speaks to us. Now, there have been times in my life where the Lord spoke to me so clearly and loudly, I thought it was audible. And, and, and I believe that did sound like the Lord. It didn't, it didn't sound like me. But I want to tell you, when he impresses upon your heart, I mean, think about it. When you're on the phone and you know, you know you're about to say something that you should not say. Or you're in conversation with somebody in the foyer. And you know that conversation is going a direction it should not go. And you get that little check. Don't say it. Don't say that. And then you say it anyway. And then you feel all icky inside. And then you're trying to do this. But you can't do it then, can you? Why? Because there was a witness unto your conscience by the Holy Spirit to try to keep you from saying that. If you want to hear the Lord, we have to be sensitive. We have to be serving. We have to be in proximity to his presence. We've, we need to be around the, the people of God. God uses the gifts of the Holy Spirit, prophecy, words of knowledge, words of wisdom, discerning of spirits. He uses all of that in a corporate context. But here's, I think, the most important thing, the most obvious thing that we miss so many times is the main way, the chief way that God will speak to us is through his written word. And if we're not reading his word that he has sent us, we're not going to hear him. Because even for the Lord to speak to our hearts and to lead us by his still small voice and impressions, do you know what we need to know? We need to know his word. We know his word. Would you stand with me this morning?
Was that okay? Did you learn something maybe? Did it help you? I really felt this for this morning. And just for a moment, what I'd like you to do this morning is just right where you are to, to close your eyes. I, have a, I, believe, I, I, I don't ask this because it's necessarily what I want to ask. I ask it because I really believe it's from the Lord. Thanks for joining us on this week's podcast. Be sure to tune in next time for more inspirational messages. Connect with us on social media at Odessa First AG. And if you'd like to support our ministry, visit odessafirstassembly.com forward slash giving. Until next time, stay blessed.